What if I told you a steam engine once went so fast that no other has ever beaten it? This was Mallard, a blue locomotive from 1938 that carried both power and grace, and its record still stands quietly untouched. Mallard's story does not begin on the day it broke the world record. It begins many years earlier, in a world that was changing faster than anyone expected. The year was 1938, but the roots of the story stretch back into a decade filled with competition, ambition, and bold ideas. This was a time when speed was a symbol of progress. Aircraft were flying higher and farther. Cars were being pushed to new limits. Even ships were chasing records across the oceans. Every machine was expected to prove something. And in the middle of all this, the world of railways was searching for its own symbol of excellence. Most people believed the era of steam was fading. They thought steam engines had reached the highest levels they could ever achieve. They believed there was nothing left to improve. But one man refused to accept that idea. His name was Sir Nigel Gressley. He was a railway engineer with a quiet confidence and an extraordinary imagination. He believed that steam still had one final surprise left. He believed that if designed correctly, a steam locomotive could move faster than anyone expected. That belief led to the creation of the A4 class locomotives. They were unlike anything the railways had seen before. When you look at Mallard, the first thing you notice is the shape. It does not look heavy or square. It looks smooth and fluid, almost like a moving sculpture. The front slopes downward in a way that resembles the beak of a bird. The sides flow like the surface of water. And the entire body is covered in a rich and beautiful shade of blue called garter blue. When the sunlight touches it, the locomotive looks like a streak of the sky. The shape was not just for appearance. It was created to fight the wind. At high speeds, the air becomes an enemy. It pushes against the locomotive and slows it down. Sir Nigel Gressley understood this better than most engineers of his time. He studied how air moved and how shapes could reduce resistance. Mallard's smooth curves allowed it to move through air with less effort. This gave it a tremendous advantage over other locomotives. Now think about this. Why did a steam engine need such careful aerodynamic design? Why would anyone in the 1930s spend so much time shaping the air around a locomotive? The answer shows how forward-thinking Gressley was. He believed that a steam engine could only reach high speeds if it fought less against the wind. Aerodynamics was the key to unlocking more power from the same amount of steam. The beautiful design of Mallard was not decoration, it was science. Deep inside the locomotive, another secret waited. Mallard was powered by a strong three-cylinder engine that worked together with a special chimney system called the Kylechap system. This design allowed steam to escape faster and more efficiently. The faster the steam moved, the more power the locomotive produced. Every part of Mallard's internal design worked together to create smooth and intense force. All of this preparation led to a single goal. The goal was simple but daring. Sir Nigel Gresley wanted to build the fastest steam locomotive in the world. The dream was clear. He wanted to create a machine that would break the world record so completely that no one would question it again. This brings us to the most important day in Mallard's life. The day was the 3rd of July in the year 1938. It was a calm Sunday morning, but there was electricity in the air. Everyone involved understood the importance of what was about to happen. Mallard had been prepared with precision. The boiler was filled. The firebox was roaring. Pressure was rising. Every part of the locomotive had been checked. The chosen track was a stretch of railway called Stokebank. It had a gentle downward slope, which made it perfect for a high-speed attempt. As the crew stepped into the cab, they knew they were facing a test that the world would remember. Mallard began to move. At first, it rolled forward like any other train, but soon the driver opened the regulator wider. The pistons pushed harder. The wheels began to spin faster. The smooth blue body sliced through the air exactly as Gressley had hoped. 30 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour. The numbers climbed steadily. But what happens to a steam locomotive when it travels beyond 90 miles per hour? How does the metal react? Do the wheels remain stable? Does the boiler stay safe? Most locomotives never found out. Mallard did. Once Mallard passed 90 miles per hour, the entire locomotive became a symphony of motion. The vibration increased. The wheels spun so quickly that they looked like circles of silver. 
The sound of the engine turned into a powerful and continuous roar. Every part of the machine worked in perfect harmony. One mistake could have destroyed the entire run, but Mallard held together. Mallard continued to accelerate. 100 miles per hour, 110 miles per hour. These speeds were already extraordinary, but Mallard was not finished. Now here's a shocking twist. Mallard was not running empty. It was pulling a full test train with coaches and equipment. This was not a light sprint. This was a powerful engine carrying real weight. It was a true demonstration of strength and not a controlled experiment. When Mallard reached the downhill section of the track, the driver opened the regulator even more. Steam surged, pressure climbed, the locomotive responded like a creature filled with determination. The speed increased sharply, and then the moment that made history, 126 miles per hour, more than 203 kilometers per hour. Mallard had done it. It became the fastest steam locomotive the world had ever seen. But something even crazier happened. As Mallard pushed past 120 miles per hour, a part deep inside the engine began to suffer. It was the big end bearing, a part that is essential for transferring power from the pistons to the wheels. This bearing was under enormous pressure. At these extreme speeds, heat built up quickly. The metal began to expand. The temperature kept rising. And finally, the bearing began to melt. Yes, it began to melt while the locomotive was still moving. Mallard had pushed itself so close to the limit that the engine began to damage itself. But the crew did not panic. They brought the locomotive back down to a safe speed. They guided it to a stop. And only then did they discover how severe the damage was. The bearing had almost destroyed itself. But the record was real. Mallard had achieved what no steam engine had ever done. After repairs were completed, Mallard did not retire. It did not become a trophy or a museum piece. It returned to normal railway service. That is one of the most surprising parts of the entire history. The fastest steam locomotive in the world went back to pulling passenger trains like any ordinary engine. People boarded the coaches without knowing that the machine in front of them had just broken a world record. Mallard carried its victory quietly and continued its work with dignity. Many years passed. Steam slowly disappeared from regular service. New technology took over. But Mallard's story did not fade. It grew stronger. Railway fans began to understand its significance. Historians began to study the design. The world began to appreciate the boldness of Sir Nigel Gressley's vision. Today, Mallard rests in the National Railway Museum in the city of York. It stands with pride, fully preserved, polished and presented as one of the greatest engineering achievements in railway history. When you stand in front of Mallard, you feel as if the locomotive still remembers the moment it touched the edge of the impossible. The curves still shine, the blue paint still glows, the nameplate still carries a quiet confidence. Now, do you think Mallard could have gone faster? Many experts believe that it could. If the bearing had remained cool, the locomotive might have reached 128 miles per hour. It might even have reached 130. No one will ever know for sure. That unanswered question gives Mallard a mysterious presence. It creates a sense of wonder that no other steam locomotive carries. The record remains untouched, and even though decades have passed and technology has changed, Mallard still stands as the undefeated fastest steam locomotive in the world. It shows us something powerful. Greatness does not always come from new technology. Sometimes greatness comes from one final burst of brilliance from the past. Mallard proved that steam still had magic left. It proved that ambition and imagination can push limits further than expected. It proved that even a machine powered by fire and boiling water can touch the edge of the impossible. That is why Mallard is more than a locomotive, because it is a moment in history, a symbol of courage, a reminder that records are broken by vision rather than machines, and a creation that did not just break a record, but rose to become a legend. If you enjoyed this story and want more legends from the world of machines and history, make sure to like the video and check out the previous videos for more incredible journeys.